what's up you guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi hello i'm lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button join the growing family turn notifications on so you never miss an upload and while you're down there give me a big thumbs up because it really does help me out today we're going to be talking about how i stopped self-harming before i did that though i wanted to make a point here i've self-harmed since the age of seven up until last year where I was 26 but what I want to say is when you self-harm you don't just hurt yourself you hurt those around you that care about you even though self-harm is a private thing a lot of the time we have someone in our family that knows it's going on for me my mum knew I self-harmed but she never saw any fresh cuts on me so the first thing I did to stop self-harming was that I learnt what triggers me to self-harm and find a healthy alternative. Now, I'm autistic and I have a special interest of ducks. I've been obsessed with ducks for a long time. So my special interest helped me. Then there's reading, playing on my Switch, making YouTube videos. The next thing is distraction. Distraction techniques were one of the main things that I used to stop self-harming. The biggest one would be I used my crisis slash self-soothe box. I call it a crisis box because for me, if I'm going into crisis and I can tell that, I get my box out, I do a face mask. I've got a lot of face masks in that box. Believe me. Some of the things I do is watch stuff, whether that's on Disney, Netflix, Prime, BBC iPlayer. Watching things is something that I do. And if that doesn't work, I have a nap. Now, I have a nap most days because my medication and going to uni wears me out. But like I said, distraction really is a big part of this for me. Getting tattoos to cover scars was my next step. Now, I have a tattoo on uh, this arm that covers a really big skull I used to have that runs. Then on this arm, I have a love heart with a semicolon and butterflies. I'm getting a rainbow done there next week, which if you're watching this, I've already done it. Stay tuned for the video. Now, the reason I think that's, that was my next step was because it covered up what, what was triggering me. I found my scars very triggering. Like I wanted to do better than I had. I was sort of competing with myself, which wasn't healthy, good, or anything that should be a thing. And the last thing I did, which is the most important thing I did, was I threw away all my tools. That I used to self harm, and then I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't replace them. Now, these are some of the things that I've done to stop self harming, and I'm a year and a month self harm free, I think. Here's how well I'm doing with self being self harm free. So, it's been, I've done quite well. I don't think I'll ever self harm again. So yeah, I hope this video helps you a bit. And it, I just want to say it is totally possible to recover from self-harm. You're not alone in this. It's not easy, but you can get through it. I believe in you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you are new, subscribe. Peace. I'm getting my energy. Comes with all day. <laughs>